All right, you guys, I am so, so excited to be here today. I am live with Miss Allie Dameron, and I am excited because we're talking about a hot topic. You guys have requested this topic over and over and over again and said, this is what I struggle with by far the most in my health and fitness journey. And so I am bringing it to you today. I have um, connected with Allie through a mastermind group that we're in, and she knows a lot on this topic. And so that's why I asked her, asked her to be here today. Um, just one second. I want to make sure that this video is posted to the right spot. One second. Okay. Before before we dive in. Yeah. <laughs> People don't see it. Okay, I think it is. I think we're good. All right. Okay. All right. So let me tell you just a little bit about Allie and why I asked her to be here today. So First of all, Allie is a mother and a wife. She has two little boys. And so um, I'm sure she can relate to a lot of you that are hopping on this video right now. Yeah. She's also a licensed acupuncturist and a personal trainer. Um, and she's been doing that for over 11 years. So she has a lot of experience in those areas. Um, and she works specifically with women. She has a private practice in um, Colorado. She does health consults and she also has a podcast, which is really cool. Her podcast is awesome. It's called The Allie Dameron Show. And she's just really passionate about teaching women the importance of health and teaching them how to be healthy in the right way. And I don't know about you, Allie, but sugar addiction is like huge. I talk to so many women every single day in my boot camps, my clients that I work with, and they say this is probably the number one thing that they struggle with is how do I stop craving sugar? How do I stop going in my pantry and like going for the cookies? How do I, when I'm out to eat, how do I say no to dessert when I just am craving it? Um, and I think you know this, Ali, but I work with a lot of women as well who are breastfeeding, who are, who are nursing their babies. Yeah. And pregnant women as well and those cravings make us even crazier yeah. <laughs> and so i'm sure you can relate you've been there and you've worked with people in the same situation so um maybe you can touch a little bit on that topic as well but i am going to just hand it over to Allie, and we're going to talk about what is sugar addiction and give you some just practical tips on how to get it under control because i know it's something i've struggled with um on a daily basis and I'm sure Ali, you've been there as well. So um, Ali, take it away, girl. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. And like Jackie said, I love to just help women um, try to navigate health the more natural way and the true way to get us to be um, more holistically healthy um, internally and externally. And so sugar cravings are hard. Um, it's something that I think as women, we all struggle with just a little bit. Um, it's rare not to find a woman that doesn't like sugar. I know that in times of my life have been worse than others, but yes, I like sugar too. Um, so there are several reasons why we have sugar cravings. Um, a couple of them being like health issues, like either adrenal fatigue or hypothyroidism stuff into gut health. If your gut is unhealthy, which means that um, – Sometimes it can mean that we have more like bad pathogens like yeast or bacteria that um, those thrive on sugar and that's what they feed on. And so if you have those in your body, you're having a lot of voters for that candy bar. Um, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to say no because that's what your body is physiologically asking for. Um, so it might not just be a willpower thing. So first things, if you feel like you are having – like intense sugar cravings, like after every single meal or your body's just really asking for sugar, chances are probably your gut health is a little bit out of whack. Um, okay. Yeah. So can you dive into that topic a little bit more? Because I know this is something as, uh, for me, I've really been researching over the past several months because after having my second baby, um, I've noticed just like my hormones are changing. Um, yeah. You know, 
adrenal fatigue is like a real thing. And um, definitely like sugar cravings get more intense when, you know, your gut's messed up and it's not healthy. So what, how, how does someone know if they have an unhealthy gut and versus just like regular sugar cravings and what can they do to um, kind of improve in that area? Yeah. So gut health can be kind of a tricky topic. I'm not going to lie, but there are a few things. So number one, if you have any autoimmune issues, that's like basically the definition of what we call leaky gut. So chances are you need some um, gut support. But if you have things like IBS, um, IBD, bloating, gas, heartburn, constipation, um, any of those are another clear sign. Sometimes like hormonal issues, which I actually had this after my second baby as well, um, everything is so interconnected with the hormones and the gut health and thyroid and adrenals and everything that um, most people just need a little extra gut health support. So um, if you're having like hormonal issues, a lot of our hormones are actually produced in our gut as well. If you're getting like frequent colds and flus, that's another sign that your gut can be a little bit out of whack because 80% of your immune system lies in your gut. So any like frequent infection to like yeast infection or sinusitis or strep throat or any of those things too can be a sign of that. Okay. That's really good to know. And yeah, that's definitely some of the symptoms that I hear women talking about over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the other things I've been reading, I don't know if you're familiar with this book, but Eat Dirt by Dr. Josh Axe. Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he talks a lot about gut health and yeah, he's huge in the gut health. Yeah. yeah. And that's been a really great resource. Um, and one of the other things that he talked about a lot is like kind of like memory dysfunction and um, yeah, like that brain fog. Brain fog. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always call it mom brain, but it's so related to your gut health, which then is related to the sugar cravings and the emotional eating and different things like that. Yeah. Um, So what do you suggest if someone is having those symptoms and those problems, like where do you start? Um, So number one, get on like a good probiotic. So like I take one that's 50 billion cells, which is really a high dose of one. But you want to get on a high dose probiotic and you want there to be multiple strains in that. So a lot of the probiotics out there have like about 5 billion cells and just like lactobacillus in them and you want them to be or you want the in the ingredients there to be like a long list of strains of bacteria that's how you know that you're getting gut health and vaginal health and immune health and all these different systems um, because they're all different bacteria. so definitely a multi-strain one and um then you want to pay attention to your food so you want to try to eat non-processed food you want to try to eliminate sugar which i know is hard but um, you have to kind of starve those bad pathogens out of there. So, right. Yeah, those are huge things. Drinking things like bone broth with the extra collagen in there is really helpful and beneficial. Um, or just taking like collagen peptides, which do you, do you take that? I do. Yeah, I do. And that's really been helpful. I feel like when I started noticing I was having some symptoms like that, I started the collagen peptides. I started a probiotic. And I also started adding... Um, kefir mm-hmm. shakes every day and that made like such a world of difference and even I have noticed like sugar cravings are like pretty much cut in half since I've been doing that too yeah it is a slow process but it does one day you'll wake up and realize that like you're not going crazy for sugar like you absolutely can't say no to it um which yeah so yeah absolutely okay so why diving more into the sugar topic why do you feel like some people have a really deep-rooted addiction to sugar as far like maybe they're not necessarily having gut issues but they're just addicted to sugar and others don't yeah so sugar cravings are super interesting and like i said the gut health thing was just one reason but it can be a lot of things from like emotional eating sugar Mm -hmm. makes us feel good it releases like 
neurotransmitters like serotonin and stuff it makes us feel happy yeah oh it makes me feel really happy <laughs> exactly. for the short term it makes you feel happy if you're feeling tired like moms are always tired your body is craving a quick fuel and so right. it's things like caffeine or sugar generally or both at the same time um to give you a quick source of fuel because it knows that you're dragging um, so that's another reason if you, um, eat a lot of artificial sweeteners that can trick your brain into craving more sugar. So things like aspartame or Splenda, NutraSweet, things like that, um, kind of changes your DNA and it will trick your brain into craving more sugar. Um, if you eat too much starch or bread products that also lead to more sugar cravings, um, it can honestly just be a bad habit. Like, I think this is a lot of, like, in offices where there's the candy jar and you just reach in and grab a handful of M&Ms or whatever. Oh, totally. Or after dinner, you're just, like, want that little piece of chocolate or dessert. Um, or maybe as a kid, you were rewarded with food, and usually that food is sugary stuff. Um, so sometimes it's just, like, psycho-emotional stuff that is deep-rooted in people, um, even from childhood, with rewards and things that made them happy. Mm -hmm. So, um, true. yeah, I think one of the biggest keys to overcoming sugar cravings is to figure out why you're having them. Is it a physical reason, like adrenal fatigue, where your body's just craving that quick fuel um, for energy or your gut health? You're having bad bacteria that's craving it. Or is it because you're having a bad habit or you're feeling depressed and that makes you happy or those types of things? I think always the, the biggest step is to figure out the reason. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something kind of to talk about, too, is it starts with our kids. You know what I mean? Like those habits start when they're little. And mm -hmm. so I think about that all the time with my three year olds. I'm like, I have to start the right habits with her now because I mean, sorry, mom and dad, I love y'all, but <laughs> I mean, it was like a regular in our house after dinner. We like we would hang out, watch TV or play games and we would have ice cream or cookies or something almost every night. And so, I mean, it's definitely like an emotional thing where you want to do that because that's what you grew up doing. That was the norm. And for so many families in America and, you know, now we're all grown up and we still have that tie, that emotional tie to eating sweets or eating ice cream or eating cake with our family or pie or whatever it was yeah. um, that you always ate. That's yeah. how it was for me. And it's such a hard habit to break. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I definitely think about that. Do you, do you feel like with your kids, there's um, like specific ways that you try to, teach them that they don't need to be like rewarded by food yeah um yes so i have a almost five-year-old and a just turned two-year-old and my almost five-year-old you know as like when he was or when i was pregnant with him and he was an early toddler i was like oh i'm never going to reward him with food and stuff but it just is around like they go to school or they whatever it's it's like amazing to me that just as a society like oh it's yeah around like school for preschool they get apple juice and like cookies for their snack and stuff and so yes i try to explain to him that like sugar is a treat and we don't need to eat sugar all the time and I'm really walking the line of trying not to give him a complex with food <laughs> just like you know but it's like yeah it's something I definitely have not mastered yet because I want him to be able to live in the real world exactly uh, yeah and it's definitely like a fine line where you're like I want you to enjoy it but I don't want you to get in bad habits yeah and I don't need to give him an eating disorder about like saying how bad it is at four so yeah it's hard it is hard. It is hard. Okay. So what are some practical tips that we can give everyone who's viewing um, about just overcoming their, whether they feel like they have a sugar addiction or whether they have minor cravings, what can they do to overcome it? Um, so like I said, first things first, figure out why you're craving it. If you're tired or having adrenal fatigue, like address that. Try to get more sleep if it's possible. It used to drive me crazy when people told me to get more sleep with a baby because I was like, oh, oh I know. It's like, how? Oh. <laughs> you do your best. <laughs> yeah, totally. So if you can get more sleep, try to get more sleep and rest. 
um, if that's what you're craving. And um, then for food, try to ditch like the artificial sweeteners. That's huge. Um, and excess carbohydrates. Try not to fill up your diet with a bunch of grains, even if they're like like healthy, like whole grains and stuff. That's just going to keep your body craving sugar because that's what it's turning into in your body. Um, so try to stay away from excess carbs and sugar, obviously. Fill up on protein and fat. That's going to um, keep your body full so your body's not going to be hungry and at least craving um, sugar for a source of energy. You'll be full. Um, and then get rid of the temptations. Try not to keep them in your house if that is tempting to you. Um, and like if you have kids and stuff with it, I promise they're not going to miss it either after a little bit. Um, they don't need to be filling up on cookies and things like that either. And now we live in such a great um, information age where there's like healthy grain-free, paleo, sugar-free, everything kind of like recipes online with cookies and bars and stuff. Um, and that's what I generally try to do with my kids, mm -hmm. more of that stuff. Um, so that will also be helpful to get it out of your house. And then I always think everybody should take a probiotic. Nobody's gut is like in perfect shape. Um, and so if you have any like candida in there or bacteria that shouldn't be there, it's going to be like really hard for you to say no to sugar because that's what they feed off of. Yeah, that's so true. It's like impossible when your body's just like craving it like that Yeah, um, for more, more or less like a medical condition. Yeah. One second. <laughs> My daughter's like, <laughs> here. Um, here, go sit down. All right, so those are really awesome tips. Um, one thing that crossed my mind when you were talking, you were saying like sometimes it's hard with the, the kids around. Um, what would you do, and this is just a hypothetical, yeah. if your husband <laughs> is a sugar addict and he brings home treats and cookies and whatnot and that's tempting to you. So you don't have a problem not buying the stuff yourself at the store, but Mm -hmm. I know I've actually recently thought about this a lot because, um, you know, I, I always am trying to eat very clean and stuff. And I work with a, a colleague at my office that she has like high school kids and she's divorced. So she lives by herself. And so she it's super easy for her to eat healthy because she doesn't have to have anybody else with that. Yeah. Really. Um, my husband, too, every Saturday, I'm not going to lie, is donut day for my kids and my husband. That's what they love to do, and they bring it home. Um, for me, I have learned, like, I never eat the donuts on Saturday, but I try to give myself, like, other treats um, mm -hmm. during the week. Like, I love to have a glass of wine on Friday night. And oh. so, yeah, exactly. So that is my, like, I'd rather have that than the donut Saturday morning. And so since I have already done that on Friday night, I'm like, okay, I had my treat. That's good. Yeah. Um, and then I eat with them. So, like, I'll make myself some eggs or an omelet or whatever. Um, for me, something that's been super helpful is tea. So I drink, like, lots of cups of tea during the day or beverages. Like, I just had kombucha, um, which is something that I used to be addicted to Diet Coke. Um, and so <laughs> that is – I love, like, carbonated beverages and stuff. Yeah. And that is something for me that has – really helped is just finding different beverages um that kind of occupy like your mouth so you're not wanting to eat right um there's desserty flavored teas and stuff and so that's something that's really helped me yeah and i know for me like like you said beverages i just keep like water with lemon literally next to me 24 7 because wow. otherwise it's like it's almost like out of like you were talking about out of habit where you're just like, all right, I need to kind of like munch on something because I'm sitting here, you know, yeah. working or hanging with my kids or whatever. And instead I'm like, okay, I got this. I'm good. I'm just going to drink, you know, my water and yeah. Fuel. And then it also triggers a response in your body to feel like it's more full when you've got, um, you know, that H2O. So let me see if there's any questions or comments over here. Let's see. Stella said she did a, a detox with Arbonne and feels so much better. So that's awesome. That's 
Um, I don't think I see any other comments. All right. Well, Ali, thank you so much. That was so helpful. Um, I know one thing a lot of people ask for are like different, um, like healthy recipes that are also sweet treats. And I know that's something you said you were big on. I'm big on that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, in my group, I just posted a, like a sugar free, gluten free, dairy free chocolate cupcake. Yeah. which because me and my daughter my daughter loves chocolate cupcakes like that's her thing she always wants to bake and so I had this awesome cupcake recipe but um it was it was not healthy and it definitely had a lot of sugar in it so I was like okay we got to figure out something new so I ended up you know finding this new recipe and kind of tweaked it a little bit and it turned out fantastic but I don't know if maybe you had a recipe that you love to make at home that I could share with everybody as well so I have a, a website that I go to, um, and I've been using it for years. It's called Chocolate Covered Katie. Okay. Um, and she does, like, she probably has thousands of recipes on her website now. It's been a, it's a site that's pretty old. Um, but she will do, like, any dietary recommendations or anything. And most of her recipes are fairly, um, like, customizable. I okay. Guess. But I think hers are the best. That's where I go. Awesome. Okay, perfect. That is such a great resource. Thank you. Because I'm sure people really, really, really appreciate that. Yeah. All right. And it's called chocolatecoveredkatie.com? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can Google her. Or she has, like, Instagram and stuff. But, yeah, she's a big blogger. And her stuff's great. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys got some valuable tips from this and that, you know, you leave this just feeling more empowered to go out there and like overcome this. It's never going to be easy um, and it's never going to go perfectly. There's always going to be temptations, especially through the holidays. Um, but I've definitely noticed, you know, if you just take it one step at a time, it does get easier. Um, and those little tiny wins that you have each and every day with overcoming that addiction or those cravings, just, it, it fuels, it fuels the process and it, it turns into big results. So definitely do not give up on yourself. If you're out there and you're just like, this is such a huge struggle for me, take yeah. it one day at a time and, um, let us know if you have any questions. Okay. All right, Ali, thank, thank you again. I really appreciate your time. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Bye.